Welcome to problem 3.22 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. All right, so um, let me actually skip to the problem I was on the wrong page to start with. Um, so the problem is that in problem 2.25, we found um, the potential on the axis of a uniformly charged disk. So if you don't remember problem 2.25 is we have a uniformly charged disk um, that has some uniform area charge smothered on it and we found the potential on this z-axis so above the disk essentially um, so you know some you know any value of r and you know theta in this case is zero since we're measuring theta from here in spherical coordinates and so this is what we found um, for problem 2.25 and essentially the r here is just replaced by the z in the problem and essentially, it asks us to use this uh, fact and also the fact that the Lth Legendre polynomial, so P sub L, um, if you plug in one, just always equals one, no matter what. Um, I guess you can think of this as like also if you have P sub L with the cosine of theta, um, then plugging in. Um, I guess it's the same as if you plug in pi over two, you know, theta of, or uh, sorry, zero. If you plug in zero over theta, you get cosine of zero, which is one, you get one. Um, but this this is just a um, uh, cosine of zero, I should say. Uh, anyways, this is a, I guess just a fact that we, we have to use. And then it wants us to evaluate the first three terms of the expansion of the equation 3.72. So equation 3.72 is this equation. So it's just the, uh, you know, the Laplace, uh, the solution to Laplace's equation for regions where R is greater than uh, your radius R uh, of the object or something. And um, so we only have the B sub L coefficients because otherwise, you know, if you had the A sub L coefficients, um, it would blow up. Um, you know, in, in this region, you only have the B sub Ls. So, uh, anyways, so this is that equation, and we just need to uh, use this equation and compare it, essentially expand it, and compare it to this equation, and somehow, you know, expand this function uh, to sort of match this. And just find the first three terms of this expansion of this essentially uh, as the expansion of this. So essentially, we're going to be trying to find the coefficients. Um, so that's part A, and so this would give us the equation. We can use this to find the equation, the more general solution um, for points off the axis. So not just for theta equals zero, but any theta. And then let's see. And then we want to find um, the potential for regions where R is less than R by the same method. And we need to break the, um, our answer up into two hemispheres. So once us for, for R less than R, um, we need to find, um, the, it, you can kind of think of yeah, like a dome around the top to be a northern hemisphere and a dome around the bottom to be the southern hemisphere. We need to find the potential in both of those regions. I kind of tried to draw with a dotted line, but imagine there was a dome around the disk, so like a flat earth or whatever, um, and you want to find the potential in the northern and southern hemisphere. So those are going to correspond to different theta values, essentially. Um, so, you know, let's just, let's just try to jump right into this problem um, and see what we can do. So I wrote out the Laplace's equation expansion here uh, for the B sub L coefficients, and then we're going to plug in zero for this. And so this just gives us, you know, a summation over the B sub L terms over R to the L plus one. And plugging in zero, we get a P sub L of one, which we know is just going to be one, so we can, we can ignore these terms. And then we know that this is going to be equal to this. And here I just factored out R so you can pull out an R, um, and the reason I'm pulling out an R 
is because here r is greater than low, uh, big R. So having it on the denominator is going to make this a small term because it's squared. And we can tailor expand this because it's going to be the square root of 1 plus like an epsilon, a small term. And we can tailor expand that to help us out. So that's exactly what I did. So I just pulled out an R. And then we expand this term as a Taylor series expansion. So the square root of one plus uh, capital R over little r whole squared is just about equivalent to one plus one half times r over r squared minus an eighth times r over r to the fourth. And then there's other terms, but we're only looking for the first three terms as the problem stated. So I'm only you know, going to expand out three terms with the Taylor expansion. So now we just um, take this expression and kind of write it out even clearer. So I just wrote out this side, um, you know, in terms of the powers of R. So we have B naught over R plus B one over R squared plus B two over R cubed. Um, and really what we're looking for, what are these coefficients? So if we write, you know, we have this, so I just kept those coefficients out and we rewrite this with the Taylor expansion, we have one plus one half r squared over little r squared minus one eighth r to the fourth over little r to the fourth. And we still have this minus one, which was outside the square root. So we can see these ones will cancel and we can distribute an r through. So this will make this, we have sigma over two epsilon naught. We have one half r squared over little r because they are canceled and minus one eighth r to the fourth over little r to the cubed because another r was canceled. And then we dropped off the minus one because it canceled out. So this is what we have. And now we can just very easily compare these two, uh, you know, term by term here. So B naught, you know, the, the term with one over r is here. So B naught is very clearly just grouping together all the coefficients. Sigma capital R squared, over four epsilon naught. Now, B1, well, B1 is a term, would be a term with a one over R squared, but there is no one over R squared term in this expansion. So obviously B1 is zero for this function. And then we have a one over R cubed term and kind of just grouping the coefficients. We see that B2 is sigma R to the fourth um, over 16 epsilon because two times eight so this is the B2 term. So now we have our first three terms of, um, you know, we've, ex we've basically expressed our potential here and I like this and found what the terms would be if we were to use uh, this expansion. So now we can write out our potential as a function of theta instead of using zero. The only difference is gonna be that you know, theta is now not zero. So our Lysander polynomials that, you know, we plugged in zero for cosine of theta that gave us cosine of one, uh, that just gives us one. So PL of one is one. Well, now the only difference is gonna be that theta is no longer zero. It can be between, you know, zero and pi over two for the Northern hemisphere uh, or, you know, uh, pi over two and pi or whatever for the Southern hemisphere. Um, but regardless, this is the potential. You just use these terms. So we have sigma r squared over four epsilon naught from here, one over r, and then the zero Lagrange polynomial. We have no b1 term, but we do have a b2 term. So we just use that coefficient here. And then we have a one over r cubed and uh, the, L, the uh, second Lagrange polynomial. And I believe there should be a negative sign here from uh, here, yeah, but I just forgot that. But I, I did have it here, so I shouldn't write it here. So this is what the potential is for part A, um, technically the first three terms, but the second term is, is zero essentially. So this is our answer for part A. And then moving on to part B, we have, now we're evaluating in the region where R is less than big R. And in this scenario, we would use the other, the a sub L coefficient 
uh, expansion for, uh, for the solution to Laplace's equation. Um, and yeah, so using this expansion, we, we know that this should still equal what we had here for theta equal to zero. And yeah, so uh, I, I don't know why I wrote pi over two, but theta is zero. I guess it could be between zero and pi over two for the northern hemisphere. Uh, yeah, so from here to here, I guess, would be valid. And then going below to pi would be the southern hemisphere. So, um, but just using this expansion, um, we can do the same Taylor series expansion we used for this term. So that's what I did, except instead of factoring out little r, I factored out big R because now big R is greater than little r. So I want the big R to be on the bottom of the fraction here um, so that we still have a big, a, a small number here so that we can actually do the Taylor expansion. So instead of factoring out little r, I factor out big R. So we now we have big R times the square root of one plus r over big R squared. Again, Taylor expanding that, I have the r, and then I have one plus one half times r over big R squared, minus one eighth r over big R to the fourth power, you know, plus dot, dot, dot for more terms. Um, and we can also distribute this r through, which I do a little bit later, but our Taylor series expansion is going to be equivalent to this series, these terms. So we have a zero because plug in L equals zero, right? We get a zero R to the zero plus a one times R plus a two times R squared. And that should be equivalent to our Taylor series expansion here, um, where we have sigma over two epsilon naught, don't forget this coefficients. And then R from here, and then Taylor series expansion, and don't forget we still have this minus R, right? So I tagged on the minus R there at the end. And really there's, you know, you can add plus dot, 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 but I'm dropping off all the rest of the terms. So just rewriting this, we have sigma R, you know, distributing all this through bits essentially. We have sigma R over two epsilon naught plus sigma over four epsilon naught R and then little r squared, and I have minus sigma over 16 epsilon naught uh, big R cubed times r to the fourth, little r to the fourth, and then plus whatever other terms from the Taylor expansion, and then finally the minus sigma over two epsilon naught times r. So that's what we get for distributing our terms, and then we can just do a term by term comparison. So you know, our a zero term is going to be the term that has no little r, which would be this first term. So a zero is obviously sigma r over two epsilon naught. Our a one is going to be whatever is has the r coefficient. So that would be here. So um, a one is going to be minus sigma over two epsilon naught. A two is whatever has is the r squared coefficient. So this term here. So a two is sigma over four epsilon naught r. And there we go, we have our first three terms. So we can then equivalently, just like we did up here, write our potential in terms of theta more generally now um, with the first three terms that we know and just tacking on the elf uh, Legendre polynomial. So, you know, we just express all the terms together and tag on the zero, the first and the second Legendre polynomial with these coefficients. And so that was for the northern hemisphere. Um, and then for the southern hemisphere, we can just set, you know, theta equal to pi. So, you know, you're down here now in the southern, you know, the southern dome. Um, and if theta is pi, then p sub L of, of cosine of pi is just gonna be negative one because cosine of pi is negative one. So, um, you know, as p sub l of one is one, then p sub l of negative one is negative one. So just using that fact, um, we can write the potential, you know, as a function of r and at pi in the, in the southern hemisphere then is the same expansion here. We're still using the case that r is less than big R, but we're just in a different hemisphere. And we still have 
a sub l r to the l, but the p sub l that would be here, that would just be one, is a minus one, but it depends on the power of, of l. So p sub l, uh, you know, of minus one, um, I believe, uh, let me think about this. So if, if p sub l, So I wrote minus one to the lth power. So I mean, if L is zero, we just get one. If L is one, we get negative one. If L is two, we get positive one. So that means a relation that, uh, so P sub L to the minus one is just negative one to the lth power then is the relationship there. Um, I mean, this is just a fact you can Google, I guess, for the Legendre polynomials. So that's how I wrote the Legendre polynomial in the summation. And then using this fact is, you know, there's really no difference here then, because if this was just one, it would be completely equivalent to this case. So the fact is that we just have a negative one, a negative sign on every odd term. And that means that the only odd term we have is a one, a zero and a two are even terms. So we would just flip the sign on the odd coefficient. So our answer is going to be the same. It's going to still be this potential, except for the southern hemisphere, A1 is going to have an opposite sign of this A1 for the northern hemisphere. So if you're going to write out your equation here, you would just flip this to a plus sign instead, and that would be your answer. So there's really no difference between the southern and the northern hemisphere besides the, the negative sign here. Uh, being positive so all right well i think that wraps it up so if you guys do have any questions um feel free to let me know in the comments below and i will try to answer them to the best of my ability so thank you guys for watching and hope you guys have a great day